it's time once again to join the East Tennessee Ghost Seekers for Paratalk, a wide-ranging open discussion covering everything from UFOs to psychic phenomena, cryptozoology to paranormal encounters. Do you have a question or perhaps you have an experience to share? Email us at etgsparatalk at gmail.com or call 865-264-0448. That's 865-264-0448. And now, here's your host, Stephen Brown, with fellow ETGS members, Steve Wiseman, Andrea Brown, Jesse Arms, LZ Adams, and me, Mike Howard. Sit back, relax, and open your mind. It's time for Paratalk. Paratalk. <laughs> hello, 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 and welcome to Paratalk. I'm your host, Steven, and joining me this week, I have my always co-partner, Miss Andrea Brown. Hello. How are you? Lovely. Good, good, good. And we also have Mr. Mike Howard. Yay! Hello. <laughs> That's hey, Mike's sister, up? Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was good. I was like, wait, who did that? You like that? That was good. Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I missed that button. Uh, <laughs> I usually only get to use that when Steve's here. That's true. That is true. Because Andrea yells at me when I use it on her. Oh, you know, man. And she, she doesn't take too well to criticism. Put the smack down <laughs> on you. That's my life. <laughs> I'm going to so start how, packing. <laughs> son of a... <laughs> Here she comes. Watch out. Andrea with a BB gun. <laughs> put that yep. red rider down. <laughs> I'll put your eye out. <laughs> you, you'll put your own eye out. <laughs> you turn the gun around backwards. <laughs> I know better than that. <laughs> so how's everybody doing? Good. 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 Awesome. Awesome. Anything interesting going on in anybody's life? He got you, didn't he? Almost. He got you. I'm bleeding over here. Yeah. Yeah. So, anything happened exciting in anybody's life since the last time we did a podcast? No, I think same old, same old. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. Been, yeah. Fairly uneventful. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in, in podcast time, it's probably been three or four days. Oh, yeah. At but, least. But in real life, it's been about 30 minutes. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> gotta do what you gotta do. Hey, I'm taking full advantage of this guy while we have him that's in true. the studio. That is true. <laughs> We're using you. you. Yeah. Hey, that's good. Somebody, yeah. somebody's got to use me somewhere. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. I understand what you mean there. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Hey. What are you doing? What? What? What are oh, you yeah. doing? <laughs> oh my gosh. So, uh, we just came off the Ted Bundy topic. Mm-hmm. And totally interesting. Uh, still don't understand any more about him afterwards than I did before, but I don't think we're supposed to. No. I mean, we had a whole 30 minutes to think about this and yeah. marinate on it. So. No, we've had four days. Oh, I mean, we had four days to really think about it and <sighs> just yeah, not enough time. Because this podcast will be coming out Wednesday. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. This one will? This one will come out Wednesday. Ted Bundy comes out tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, actually, it'll be later tonight, but you know, people will probably listen to it on Sunday. I'm so confused. It's Wednesday, Andrea. And it's never stopped raining since the weekend. <laughs> yeah. I can believe that. Yeah. It's been 47 days. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's been about you know it's rained only twice. So I've heard it's like rained the first time for 45 days and then the second yes. time for about 35. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's only rained twice. Yeah. That's yeah. all. I'm still, right. I'm still building my arc. Yeah. <laughs> Your hand's sore. Let my me know when you're done. <laughs> Try to figure out what the hell a cubit is. <laughs> where do you find that gopher wood at? I don't know. Once I figure out where a cubit is, then I'll go find the gopher wood. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's when you get up and you go for wood. <laughs> 
Oh, there's so <laughs> many, there's so many jokes right there. Oh, oh yeah. Thank you. Uh, yes. <laughs> I'll be here all week. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Please tip your waiters. Yeah. So uh. tonight it's paranormal news. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I freaking love paranormal news. I mean, oh heck yeah. Because you know I try to post as much crap on our Facebook page to keep people entertained. It's not crap. Well, I mean, <laughs> that's just how I talk. How long have we been together? A while. Okay, yeah, it's been at least four days. <laughs> at least four <laughs> at days. At least four days. <laughs> at least four days. <laughs> and, but, you know, back when I listened religiously to Darkness Radio and, and all those, I don't have time to do it all the time now, but I loved it when they would do Paranormal News. We've done a couple of episodes of mm-hmm. Paranormal News. And tonight we're bringing it back. Woo-woo. Content is king. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Yes, it mm. is. Love it. Well, it's going to be fun. Love it. So excited. So excited. So, this is my first round of paranormal news with y'all. Yes, it I'm is. I'm very excited. I'm glad. Because I brought some paranormal news, too. Yes. And I'm so excited about that. I changed it up at the last minute because when you first told me, I thought you said paranormal nudes. <laughs> yeah, I had something I know, completely that, different planned. That first picture he sent, I was I like, am Whoa. so sorry. I, yeah. so, that's, I, call that, I call that one my shy Casper. Um, I apologize. Oh, I he, was see my like, he was playing peekaboo. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> mm. 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 Oh, uh, he, he's so perfect to be sitting here with us. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> this is so uh, good. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> in other news, <coughs> people yeah. out there now are going, "What does he mean by shy Casper?" It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> you can look up whatever you want, but it means it just came out of my weird little head. That's all. Uh, you will, I guarantee you, there's something on Google be- that goes, yeah. "Oh shit, what really?" <laughs> He's talked about the shy Casper. <laughs> can't believe that. I thought we were the only ones that did that. <laughs> it's going to become a hashtag now. <laughs> hashtag shy Casper. <laughs> uh, if you, oh. y'all that are listening to this, um, uh. if in the comments, if you were just give a give us a hashtag shy Casper, uh. I just want to see how many we can get. <laughs> that would be so funny. And if you want to include any pictures. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Hey, um, send no. them to Steve Wiseman at <laughs> yeah. shycasper.com. Oh, oh, he's going to hate that. <laughs> he's going to love that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> all right. So, uh, Mr. Howard, what do we have first? Oh, on we have your, all on kinds your... of exciting stuff for paranormal news. Uh, well, let's see. We can start with this. Is actually, this is one I didn't I actually put out found, found late but I, th- I think this is really amazing okay um and this actually came from of all places the folks at npr awesome national public awesome. radio and uh, after spending as many uh, uh centuries in, in radio as i have some of the best radio you can find is npr yeah fantastic but they actually did they actually did a story a couple weeks ago and uh, and i we we've posted it uh on the uh on the uh, facebook page um but they talk about it's called Paranormal Profits, and they talk about how movies, movie business especially, is uh, apparently terrifying because because most movies all lose money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Almost yeah. every single movie made loses money at some point. There's one genre that never loses money almost to no end. Can I guess? Yeah. I'm going to say horror. It's, you're exactly right. Horror yeah. movies do not lose money, period, and they never have. And, That's and crazy. So they actually do a whole uh, about a whole nine minute uh, 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 talk about why that happens, and they say the main reason people like being scared, fear itself. Yeah, and that's, that's mm. the sole reason why people love to be scared. Makes sense. Totally does. I mean, look at the people who come out to our events. Mm-hmm. They Adrenaline come because they want to be scared. People absolutely love to be scared, mm-hmm. so they will spend whatever amount of money it costs. To see good movies, bad movies, mediocre, doesn't matter. If it's a horror movie, you're almost guaranteed to make money off of it. And that's why they're so shocked whenever there are horror, horror movies that come out that lose money. Because yeah. they really are that bad. I wonder... Well, some of my favorites are the bad ones. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Those cheesy... Oh, still to this day, one of my favorite movies of all time is Chud. Oh my gosh. Uh, 
That was, love that, Chud. That was a, that was a Cinemax staple. That was usually came on late Friday nights. Mm-hmm. That I was on right before it. one of the Emmanuel movies. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you could get scared. Bow chicka wow. <laughs> and then see Emmanuel go someplace in the world. Yes. And take off her clothes. <laughs> yeah. But it was cannibalistic humanoid underground dwellers. Yes. Horrible movie. And they made a part two. But it was awesome. Yes, it was. It was awesome. Yeah. And it was scary. It was scary enough. Yeah. Uh, I love that movie. I remember the first time I saw Chud was on Super Scary Saturday (laughs) on like TBS or WGN or whoever it was that did Super Scary Saturday. It came on at like two o'clock in the afternoon. So it was a totally edited version. Then I saw it on like Cinemax. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. It's better. It's there's better. A, there's a lot of nude scenes in it. It's a great movie. Yes, it's a fantastic movie. <laughs> there's nudes, and there's cannibalistic humanoid underground dwellers. Yeah. That's all you need for a movie right there. Yeah. I agree totally. <laughs> like Chernobyl Diaries? Oh, even better. Better than Even Chern- better. Yeah. Chernobyl Diaries is all right. Mm-hmm. Part, there's part of that movie that's, there's parts of that movie that are very slow, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, very, very slow. Well, the best part of that movie was when the bear came out oh. to there. That was the scariest thing in there. <laughs> Me and Andrea, we were watching this on my laptop. <laughs> and both had headphones on. And we're sitting here, we're watching, you know, and it's all quiet. And they're going through the building. And I was like, Bruh. I was like, holy oh, shit. And I'm like pulling the headphones off. She is too. I'm like, what the hell was that? <laughs> that in the part where he was in the water and the... The fish? Yeah. I mean, but it, I thought it was good, maybe. Yeah, no, it, it, and that's the thing. If you're if you're out there and you're an aspiring film maker, and you want to make sure that you have some sort of a hit to begin with, mm-hmm. go, go with a scary. horror. Go scary. And and I'm telling you, someone that we know that totally should be rocking this right now, Mr. Neil and Bright. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. He, I mean, he's done some some zombie stuff, mm-hmm. you know. And you were in what one or two of a couple of things, couple of things, yeah, yeah. That he's worked on. I'm telling you right hey, now, though, I'll I'm be th- a scream queen. Well, you the cool, scream. the cool thing nowadays, especially with horror movies, is you don't have to do, you don't have to go big budget if you can get something that's fairly atmospheric. I mean, well, look at look at Blair Witch, the first Blair Witch. <laughs> okay, that's yeah. one of my favorite movies, yeah. but you got to think too. Paranormal Activity. Yeah, that thing blew up. I mean, anything that comes off as a, a mockumentary, mm-hmm. anything that comes off as real. I mean, and it was filmed all in one house. Yeah, yeah. I mean yeah. those with DVR cameras and handheld camera cords. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I can totally see that. You know, because you're you pay out what fifteen thousand yeah. dollars, and you luck out and have something really cool, yeah. and bam! It's all about how you market it. Mm-hmm. As long as you can let people know it's out there. Yeah, they'll come. I mean, and they, then. People thought that was real. Blair Witch yeah. Yeah. was a trip when it was com- when it came sure. out because That's- everybody was like, "Oh my gosh, these kids, these guys are you know." Yeah. It was the these, found footage. Yeah, yeah, the found footage, and is this real? It's real. This is so real because they it, played it off as being s- yeah. like a well, they legit. Made, they made Heather Donahue and the cast all sign agreements. That yes, they would not they? That, but they would not let anybody know what was going on. They, they disappeared. Went into yeah, yeah. And oh my gosh, no, I mean, it her, was amazing. Their first appearance was on the MTV uh, Movie Awards. Yeah, yeah. After Which Blair is Witch, unbelievable. But it's one of those movies you had to see it in the theater to get the actual effect. Oh yeah. Because the first time that my wife saw it, we saw saw it sitting in a in a in a living room. Nothing. Now see, I didn't I didn't actually yeah. get to watch it in the theater. Oh, I yeah. watched it at I home, went and I I loved it. When did it come out? Uh, ninety nine. No, it was 90, before that. Ninety seven. About ninety seven. Yeah. Okay, so I was like sixteen, so I wasn't probably allowed to watch it in the theater. Uh, <laughs> see, <so you laughs> if were, it was rated R, then I couldn't watch it in the theater. <laughs> but you already, you already had, you already had the anticipation that it was going to be. Really oh bad. gosh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I it it had built up, and I was like already at the point of oh, I've got to see. It was ninety nine. No, it wasn't. It was okay. 99. okay. Yeah. I was well. I was seventeen then. When it came out, so yeah, ninety nine, and then the had uh, Blair Witch two, Book of Shadows, yeah. yeah, and then you had the remake that came out in like twenty sixteen, something mm-hmm. like that, yeah, sixteen or fifteen. It, it was a good movie. It was good. It was it very was a good. good movie. But the amazing thing with Blair Witch is you look at the, they, it was very minimal amount of money spent. You, you never actually saw any type of a mm-hmm. monster. No, or witch. nothing. It was the unknown, yeah. and that's yeah. that's one of the awesome things about paranormal yeah. is because the, it's yeah. the the unknown. And one of the and one of the most, and still to this day. 
still to this day, one of the most terrifying moments in that whole movie, still for me, is just seeing him standing in the corner. In the, in the corner. corner. Yes. That that yeah. visual sticks with me, and that, that I, even yeah. when I say it, I'm getting goosebumps. <laughs> I don't know why, and I'm just like, I know we, I know, I know they're making a movie. I've made movies before. I know it's completely fake, but just that visual oh, as yeah. the camera goes down and you see him in the corner. Yeah. I went, oh my god. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. effective. Yeah. But see, and it's just like now, you know, The Exorcist mm-hmm. scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Andrea watched it and thought it was boring. Well, I, I mean, because I actually watched it for the first time in its entirety. Like just, two years ago. No. No. Like this year. or uh, this year? October during yeah. Halloween time, you know. I decided I was going to watch it because I've never actually seen it in its entirety. And I was like, okay. But because the only thing is because at this point, the the movies that I've seen are just so much more... Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, there's just so much more to him. So seeing something like that, I could see why it would be so scary, oh, sure. you know, like that. Which is another reason why I never got to watch it when I was younger because yeah. that was too scary. Mm-hmm. For At me. that time, it was shocking. Yeah. It, plus, it had stuff in there. Oh that yeah. You just, I mean, it was it was just shy of an X rating. Yeah. I, actually, yeah. me and Xander watched it, and I was like, all right. Dude, close your eyes. <laughs> I close was like, your, I don't, close your ears. I was like, I don't, part. I don't want you to just, just yeah. put your head down. Yeah, because I don't want you to see your this, yeah. you know. Yeah. And so, even for a fifteen-year-old, I'm like, uh-uh, I don't want you seeing this. Yeah. Not that it's, not that I think it's scary. I just, it's like, kind of oh, like sure. that whole inappropriate thing. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very much so. But uh, even then, I mean, still, like, still today, mm. Exorcist still makes a ton of money. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, a ton of money. I yeah. mean, because it's. More, it's like nostalgic. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. a it's a nostalgic horror film, yeah. and anybody you talk to, I mean, from probably the from twenty to sixty, you say, "What's one of the scariest movies you've ever seen?" The Exorcist. The Exorcist. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's it's gonna come up. It's I mean, gonna come be. On. One. Chud's still making money. Yeah, it is. Come on now. Love come that on. movie. There we go. And Evil I'm Dead. I'm not so sure. Evil Dead. Morristown, Morris- Tennessee, in the house. Woo-woo. Dude, I had one of the one of the stones out of the fireplace. Really? And I think my cousin Trevor has it. Trevor, if you're listening, I'm coming to get it. <laughs> but we went up there, and the the lady that owned the property, yeah. she's like, "Well, the house is burnt down. The cabin's burnt down." She goes, "But the fireplace is still standing. Go over and knock your rock out of it." There you go. And so we did. <laughs> so. Hi. <laughs> Now, where I grew up at in Texas, in, in Austin, I was about 20 minutes away uh, from the road where you can go down and actually see the original uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre house. That's, That's cool. Badass. And the cool thing is, it's literally, in, I mean, it's, it's, it's minutes from just mass city urban sprawl. Really? But you go down this little frontage road. And then you have this little road that's off next to the frontage road. And it's this tree-lined road. And you're driving down, you go, wait a minute, I've seen this road somewhere. Oh, wait a minute. Leatherface was standing in the middle of this road <laughs> Where's swinging. Where's bitch yeah. at? <laughs> and, as you, and just as you figure that out, that's where you're at because there's still trees along the side. You suddenly look off to your left or right, depending on which way you're coming on the road. And there's the house by itself sitting kind of up on this little hill oh with gosh. nothing around it. Oh, wow. And it still looks exactly the same. You're like, oh, my God. God, there it is. That's awesome. That's, That's so crazy. awesome. And apparently that was the house that, that was that was Toby Hooper's um I guess it was the, the house that belonged to his the girl that was babysitting for him and his wife. Mm-hmm. That was her parents' house. Really? How cool. It's just, it's a farmhouse out in yeah. the middle out in the middle of nowhere between uh, Austin, Texas and Round Rock, Texas. And and that, that house, like the Amityville house, has struck fear. Oh, in so many teenagers' yeah. minds. And if you still drive by, you still see it sitting there, and you go, oh, my God, it's just it's terrifying to see it. Okay, oh. just going on a, a scary movie that affected me, Children of Corn. Yes, anything with kids. Yeah. Exactly. Children of the Damned. Yeah. Oh, come on, stop. I'm telling you, uh, that was one that I, I was able to watch mm. secretively. Sorry, Mom. Scary kids. Um, but yeah, that freaky. that was like one of those that I was <laughs> like, uh, oh, this is really bad. Yeah. <laughs> and I had to take a trip up to 
Indiana and with, driving with, through with all my the church corn. Cor- with my church group oh, oh. and it was nothing but corn yeah. and it was around the time that I had seen the movie you were waiting and for I was a, like a dead body yeah. propped up the middle oh my road. gosh I was oh. terrified I was like oh my god we're in the car Go go go! Dude, uh, just waiting, just waiting. But uh, I was like, just, Andrea, just go. come here. Uh, <laughs> just go, just go. I got some corn for you. Come here. Uh, look at my pitchfork. Can uh, <laughs> I can never eat corn again. I call this one the shy Casper. Uh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my god. <laughs> He's here all week, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. And it comes back around. <laughs> Don't worry, it'll be back up at the end. Yeah. We'll bring it back. <laughs> wait, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> the Shy Casper will be mentioned again at the end. <laughs> ah, there you go. Sorry, I had to expand <laughs> that phrase. What? <laughs> what? I'm leaving. <laughs> I quit. What? what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Quit being a dirty mind. You said it. I said it, but you thought it. Butt stuff going on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, paranormal news. How about this one? So, a mother in Atlanta, mm-hmm. all right, just down the road, grieving mother, mother in Atlanta, stunned when her home secretly, or the home security system was apparently triggered by an appearance from the spirit of her deceased son. Oh, that is creepy. Eerie moment allegedly occurred last week. This was uh, from this is actually from uh, uh, Atlanta Journal Constitution uh, about a week ago. Oh my gosh! Uh, the eerie moment allegedly occurred last week as journal as Jennifer Hodge watched TV with her daughter and was alerted by her phone that something was wrong in her house. So it mm, popped up on her technology on her, on her phone that there was something wrong in her house. According to her security system, an intruder had entered the kitchen. And triggered the camera. So that's terrifying enough. Uh, yeah. Their initial concerns quickly gave way to astonishment as they looked at the phone and it showed an actual picture from the camera. Mm-hmm. It discovered, they discovered an apparition apparently in her kitchen. All the more remarkable is that the anomaly, Hodge said, was the ghostly figure had an eerie resemblance to her son who had died two years prior. Oh. The mother and daughter threw caution to the wind and threw themselves into the kitchen to investigate the situation where they were mystified when they saw that there was no one in the room and no Ooh, doors open. Trippy. My kind of girls, though. Yeah. I mean, they're like, what's this? This looks like a ghost. Let's go check it out. That's right. That's right. I mean, that's, that's, but that's creepy, though. I mean, yeah. as a parent, I, I could not imagine, like, ta da. You, you know, look at your phone, you see that there's someone in your house, and then you look at the picture that the phone security system sending to your phone, and it's a picture of your son who is two years past. Oh, God. That's that's just crazy. So That's creepy. Yeah. Well, well, interesting stuff. And it's so, but apparently it had enough, it had enough, there was, there was enough, you know, body, substance, substance to, the, to the image that it actually set off the, the security system. That's, okay. Which... I'm pretty sure that that is going to lead into a story that I'm going to read, but I'm wondering if ghosts or spirits have enough, having enough substance, Mm -hmm. can it be tested? You know, is there any way to, to test that substance? To find out if it is connected to a certain person, if you know, kind of like a DNA trail. Sure. You know. Are you talking about uh, ectoplasm? Yes. <laughs> of sorts, yes. But I mean, it, you know, there's. So this is going to segue into your story. It can. Okay. Well, why don't you follow us up with that, and so we can follow the trail you're walking on? Because all I'm seeing is. Shackles. But I want to go to this trail. All I can hear, whenever I hear ectoplasm, all I all I can picture is Bill Murray laying on the floor saying, "I feel so funky." <laughs> 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 well, I don't know about Bill Murray, but I can tell you about Dan Aykroyd. Okay, okay, let's let's go. Let's good see. segue, huh? Yeah. It was until you said good segue, huh? <laughs> Shut up. 
So, Dan Aykroyd, um, best known as a Canadian comic um, and the master behind Ghostbusters, Saturday Night Live, and the Blues Brothers, he's an interesting fellow. He is more than that. He is actually a fourth generation ghost hunter, UFOologist, and a paranormal master. Really? Oh, yes. So, you know, he spent several years in the comedy field, mm -hmm. you know, movies and all that. Well, he's essentially retired, and now he spends his time researching paranormal activity, alien abductions, and UFOs from his haunted farmhouse in Canada. Oh, that's awesome. How oh, cool. That's Seriously. Awesome. So, and he... He's has no qualms about, you know, being open um, about his belief in the, uh, you know, obscure and occult. Yeah. And he talks about it openly, freely. That's awesome. So, um, he, you know, he, as paranormal investigators, you know, mm -hmm. we always try to say, you know, we're not experts. Mm -hmm. You know, we're always learning. Mm -hmm. But him being referred to as a paranormal master... You know, people ask, you know, what does it take to be a paranormal, ma paranormal master? And according to him, a lifetime of commitment to the truth and a family that believes in uncovering the mysteries of the universe. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, he's not new to this, obviously. Um, the Ackroyds have been searching for the truth about ghosts for a while. And their history dates back to, the, um, to his great-grandfather, who is a spiritualist and a dentist. <laughs> what? Yeah. He's, he's, a, a, he's a spiritualist dentist. So yes. you, you can get your your demons evacuated and plaque and tartar decay yes. dealt yes. with at the same time. Yes. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> he actually still lives in the farmhouse that has been um, a host to seances and spiritualist get-togethers for decades. Wow. Um. And he says that the house has a history of spiritual activity activity that would blow your mind. And despite living in the, the farmhouse, he has yet to have a direct experience with the, an apparition as really? an adult. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's, you would think yeah. living in this and being surrounded by it, but, um, but yeah, no. Um, <laughs> now, this is kind of a funny backstory that um, he actually claimed that the ghost of a famous musician liked to cuddle in bed. Really? Does he say who that famous He is? does, actually. Um, one of his many houses mm -hmm. is, a Los, um, is a Los Angeles bungalow where notable uh, musicians like Mama Cass from the Mamas and the Papas mm. and Ringo Starr lived in the 60s and 70s, right? So when he lived in the home, he claimed a ghost, which he believed to be the spirit of Mama Cass, uh, was haunting the place because someone would turn on a stairmaster <laughs> and mess with the family jewelry. <laughs> um, but he said that uh, the the biggest revelation that he had about the ghost uh, was that it once crawled into bed with him, um, and he said he just rolled over and nuzzled up to it whenever it was, whatever it was, and went back to sleep. And he's sure that it was Mama Cass because... He got the feeling that it was a kind of a big ghost. <laughs> <laughs> and it was eating a, it was eating a sandwich in bed. Yeah. I mean yeah. while playing with the family jewelry. Yes. And you know, working and on the stairmaster. You'd smell crispy creams. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. Oh. So bad. <laughs> so um he also says that he has actually seen four UFOs. Um, in a 2015 interview with the Huffington Post, um, he tried to play it cool about the fact that he witnessed a series of phenomena that would drive ordinary people crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever he was asked about his experiences with extraterrestrials, he said he's seen four UFOs, though he's not sure if they were alien or human. Boy, what? Okay. Well, he said, I can't say that they are alien craft and neither can the Air Force. But the Air Force has been very interested in it. They don't deny the existence of the hyperdynamic, super aerodynamic dynamic crafts. 
And uh, two of the crafts he claimed were seen one night in Martha's Vineyard. And he said they were seen flying side by side. And they were about 100,000 feet up. Wow. Jeez. That's pretty far. Yeah. And they were going really fast. <laughs> That's good. It is, right? I mean, I would assume that it being 100,000 feet up in the air. How does he... 100,000... I don't know. That's what I was like. That Too many questions I can throw out there. Yeah. Too many questions. Um, I think he was drinking his vodka. <laughs> So, um, he actually purchased some UFO footage for a t- from a tarmac worker at the O'Hare Airport. Really? Huh. Yeah. Um, on November, in November of 2006, an employee at the O'Hare International Airport allegedly saw a large disc floating in the middle of the airspace and recorded the footage. And the footage never turned up, but Aykroyd supposedly has it. He claims to have purchased the footage from a tarmac worker after announcing that he had the footage. He alleged he would be releasing a DVD with the never-before-seen footage and photographs. And some of it... Did you know he has a documentary? No. It, some, of the, um, some of this footage uh, made it into his documentary, Dan Aykroyd Unplugged on UFOs. Really? Mm-hmm. Hmm. I wonder if that's available on Amazon. I don't know. Maybe... Um, so he does believe that aliens are walking with us. Um, pretty interesting. Um, let's see. He actually appeared on Larry King Live in 2010 and made the claim that we're living in a they live scenario. Really? Uh, Yeah. Um, and he explained to King that while aliens are living as our friends and neighbors, they haven't shown themselves because they don't want anything to do with us. I don't blame them. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't want anything to do with me either. <laughs> I don't blame them. <laughs> so, um, he has claimed that even though he is not seen a full body apparition as an adult, um, he has actually seen a ghost as a child. Um, and he claims that he was apparently a ghost magnet. Um, he claimed that when he was a kid, there was a time when his mother, a skeptic, actually saw the ghost of his great-grandparents watching him sleep. Um, his mother speaks about a time when she was nursing him, and an old couple came to the end of the bed, and then the Im- image faded away. Um, but she pulled out an album and realized that it was his great-grandfather and his wife, and they were coming to approve of the new child. Wow. Hmm. So, yeah, um, you were asking about the book. He does have a documentary called Dac- Dan Aykroyd Unplugged on UFOs. And uh, I found it. it oh, is good. On, it is on Amazon. Um, they only have one copy of it left. Oh, geez. And it's fifty four ninety nine. All right. That's one hell of a DVD. That's a hell of a DVD. Um, the documentary <laughs> features interviews with... And footage from the likes of astronaut Gordon Cooper, Gordon. NASA engineer John Schuessler, and President Ronald Reagan. Really? Yeah. Um, one thing that's pretty awesome, um, he thinks that there should be more science in uh, parapsychology. Um, uh, he said that uh, as much as he loves the fantastical elements that go along with hunting ghosts and ufology... He also believes there should be more legitimate science applied to the parapsychology, and he thinks that there would be major discoveries if physicists began analyzing ghosts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree with him there. He explains uh, that our oxygen and nitrogen and hydro- hydrogen molecules coalescing to produce these visions in front of people. I'd love, I'd love it if someone researched. Um, wait, I'd love if. Some research were done on materialization. As an example, he discussed mediums who were able to produce fully formed limbs from their mouths. He thinks it would be nice to get some DNA and see if the DNA of the person exuding this mass of the ectoplasm or the DNA of another being. Hmm. See, that's where the connection was. Gotcha. Gotcha. Got that? Got it. I mean, who knows? Is it possible? I don't know. I don't know. But we're not going to find out unless people get out there and try. That's true. Absolutely right. Um, Let's see. He thinks the government knows about UFOs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think uh, yeah. the vast majority of population uh, believes that. Yeah. Um, Crystal Head Vodka is his nod to an alleged Central American alien discovery. 
Ah, uh-huh, nice. Yes. Uh, when he introduced K- Crystal Head Vodka in 2008, he was making a direct reference to the Legend of the Crystal Skulls that also appeared in the movie Indiana, Indiana Jones, Jones and the Kingdom uh-huh. of the Crystal Skull. Nice. Before rolling out the vodka, Aykroyd said that he was nervous about incurring the wrath of Steven Spielberg. Fortunately, when the two met to talk about their similarly named products, Spielberg requested the vodka to be served at the film premiere. Wow, that's pretty cool. So, speaking to The Telegraph, Aykroyd claimed the vodka is made in the last government-owned distillery in the world in the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. And he has won a double gold medal at the Spirit Oscars. Wow. That shit's expensive. Yes. Uh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, his father wrote a book about paranormal activity. Mm-hmm. Um, his father, Peter Ackroyd, released an exhaustively researched book called A History of Ghost. Hmm. I wonder if that's available. Huh. I'll be checking that you right check now. You can check on that. Um, and actually, it's kind of funny. He said, speaking about the book and paranormal research, the Ghostbuster star said it's the family business, for God's sake. Much of the material in the book was recorded by Peter Aykroyd and his father, Samuel Aykroyd, during the seances. While researching the book, Peter Aykroyd found the notes locked in a trunk and began working them into the book. Um, let's see. He believes in some kind of afterlife. Some kind. Um, yeah. <laughs> <And> <laughs> some kind. It literally says he believes in some kind of afterlife. Um, he, he actually said um, somebody asked him in 2012 if he feared death and the multi-hyphenated actor, paranormal investigator, vodka aficionado said he knows the spirit survives, but he hopes he's not sliced in half by a plate glass window. That, that would be bad. <laughs> And he said that his preferred way to pass from this mortal coil would be to pass through the veil in my 90s at the farmhouse by the lake where the seances took place with all my great-grandchildren around me. Um, uh, Let me break in real quick. Uh, The History of Ghosts, A True Story of Seances, Mediums, Ghosts, and Ghostbusters Mm -hmm. by Mr. Peter H. Aykroyd is available on Amazon, and I will post a link to that where you can buy it through our affiliate link and the Help us out a little bit. Awesome. That's okay. So, um, finally, uh, just to note, his father approved of the opening scene in Ghostbusters. You know, being the paranormal investigator Mm -hmm. and that history. Um, He said since, it says since Ackroyd comes from a family of parapsychologists and paranormal investigators, you might think they were tough on him for taking the family business and turning it into a comedy. Um, in Ghostbusters, but that's not the case. His father, Peter, was elated with the film and thought that the opening scene where a ghost completely wrecks the basement of the New York Public Library was in- incredibly accurate. He told, uh, Peter Aykroyd told the Daily Beast, it was a pure poltergeist phenomenon and absolutely true to form. He said, let's face it, he was writing this thing from conviction. There was truth in that, even though it seemed fantastic. And as much as Peter thought the opening scene was accurate depiction of the poltergeist, <laughs> he did feel the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man was a bit much. <laughs> oh. I would have believed that. Say, I like the old Stay Puft guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, that, okay, I know that was a lot, but I'm telling you, that was pretty cool that Dan Aykroyd has such a history and he is a fourth generation ghost hunter that's awesome that's awesome that is yeah. and if you want to get his crystal head vodka mm-hmm. oh, they yeah. have it available in the stores you can go to the big total wine and more store it's only fifty dollars hmm. it's only fifty dollars for like for, an ounce for a 750 no for no. a full for a full for a fifth, yeah. no. for a fifth. There you comes go. in that really cool crystal skull yep like, like, that. Yeah. like this one right here i will have to say there was no vodka in that. No. no. She bought me just the head. Just the head. <laughs> that was a lot cheaper than the vodka. <laughs> <laughs> I could only afford the $15 bottle. <laughs> <laughs> and it came empty. <laughs> and now it has lights. There you go. See? 
Because I knew he wouldn't finish the drink. He's just going to empty it out and put the lights in there. Yeah. Well, hey, Dan Aykroyd, if you're listening and you've not seen, he said he's not seen anything in his house. Yeah, he's not seen, and as an adult, he has not seen a full-bodied apparition. Uh, Dan, if you're listening, you, we'll, we'd be happy to come do an investigation at your house. Well, we told uh, that we I would told absolutely that we love, especially like that old farmhouse. Oh, yeah. oh, oh my yeah. gosh, in Canada. Yeah. Hey. Canada. I'm there. <laughs> Sign Take me up. Off. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <is> there? <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Do they actually say that? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Do don't they, you don't you remember watching the, the those uh, yoga shows? hosers? <laughs> well, that's funny too. But no, I'm talking about the, uh, the it's on DIY network. The guy that and like the house builder. Things. Yeah, that was he was up in Canada. And that's true. He said, "How boot that all the time." That is true. How, he boot did. That. <laughs> How funny Always. is it that every time you say Canada? Huh? Get like an accent. That's just you. <laughs> no, that's not. You just did. Really? <laughs> How's it going, eh? <laughs> Canada. You know that video, that show God. that they showed up in the, they filmed up in Canada. <laughs> Canada. <laughs> Look at him. I thought he was Asian. <laughs> People often make that mistake. <laughs> right? Yeah. I, I don't understand why. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know. It's crazy. Actually, Canadian. Craziness. Yeah. Canadian, Hasht- eh? <laughs> Hashtag sweet tea. <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> <by> Casper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here you go. Uh, we go from Canada across the pond to England. Nice. This is a, this is actually a brand new story. This was just out the other last week. Uh, guards of a cave in England were amazed when they discovered that what they thought was graffiti was in fact hundreds of centuries old markings intended to ward off evil spirits. What? This creepy cave is said to be part of the Cresswell Crags Limestone Gorge in the country of. Nottinghamshire, or the county of Nottinghamshire. Uh, mm. Until recently, local guides had suspected that the litany of symbols crawling, uh, scrawled on the uh, walls of the cave were the work of ne'er-do-wells who tried to leave their mark in the cave. They thought it was graffiti. However, a couple of explorers who visited the site last year discovered something strange about the writing and actually indicated that it was apotropatic. Apotri- Those symbols and letters, coll- uh, uh, colloquially known as witch signs were used in the 17th and 18th centuries by people trying to ward off evil spirits. So now, researchers think the suspicion of the cave dwellers was subsequently confirmed by experts who visited the site and were surprised by the sheer number of markings found there. They actually think this might be considered a possible gateway to hell. What? What? Oh my gosh. That's trippy. (laughs) That's a good story. Witch marks on a cave. Wow. And they thought it was graffiti for a long time. Right, look at that. It's graffiti on the cave. <laughs> <laughs> Some little pisses come along and spray paint on the damn cave. Look at that. Oh, my God. What's going on? Look at that. It's probably Canadian. Bloody hell. <laughs> thought he was Asian. <laughs> Wait, what's that? That's a freaking witch mark. Look at that. Why is it so oh, hot? Da. Why is it so hot here? <laughs> So yes, Nottinghamshire, possible this is entrance to hell. Fantastic! Wow, wow. So if you're looking for a place to go, take a quick jaunt. Yeah, head over to Nottinghamshire. Yeah, check out a witch cave. Hello, how are you, what are you here for? I'm here to see the gateway to hell. <laughs> oh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Sorry. I'm a condi. <laughs> okay, the place where they got the graffiti. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's <laughs> right. Come <Yeah. this> <laughs> here. There you go. Okay, way to help. Well, something to think about. Yeah, that's that's wow. Hmm. Makes me want to go take a trip. I would almost fly for that. Almost. <laughs> yeah. That's pushing it, buddy. <laughs> you don't take me to Ireland, you ain't going nowhere. Okay. See, I would totally go to Ireland, but you I'd would have, have to, to drug get, him yeah, up. Yeah, tw- you didn't let me finish talking. I was going to say after you drug me up. <laughs> but then, like, the cost of the flight and staying there and then the drugs. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> totally worth it. I got some places you can take a trip. It's a little closer than, than okay. Nottingham Shearing. Right. Uh, okay. You can actually go to uh, Lakewood, which is just apparently it's a neighborhood in Cleveland. 
So okay. just, just up the road in Ohio. Yeah. yeah, four hours away. Four hours away. Ohio. Because they actually have a brand new shop slash museum there. The Cleveland Area Paranormal Society, or CAPS, they've made a business out of exploring everything that makes Cleveland creepy, and they now have a museum slash shop right there in Lakewood, Ohio. Very cool. Cool. A museum right there. And that, the, the museum actually explores all of uh, Cleveland's ghostly history. Ooh. Intriguing. That's awesome. We should go. Yeah. I wonder if they need help giving the tours. <laughs> <laughs> But they've actually, the, the, the CAPS group has actually done a, they've been doing a lot of extensive research into Cleveland's haunted history. They started looking at possibly writing a novel about it, the, the founder of the society uh, talked about. But then she said, you know what, they were, they were just doing walking tours, mainly just for friends. They were, they started realizing that these little walking tours they were doing were starting to sell out all the time. People were hearing all about it. They explore old Brooklyn and Ohio City. And then they uh, started doing a little bit more stuff in October around Halloween. And then they started realizing, hey, you know, this is actually a pretty big thing. And it turns out that Cleveland has a lot of paranormal history. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. I've heard yeah. so much about their history. So to the point now where they've actually, uh, just last week, they've opened up a museum slash shop right there That's in Lakewood, cool. Ohio. That is awesome. So uh, you can go by there and visit that and find out about Cleveland's history. And that's where their, that's where their walking tours now start. Every night. Very oh. cool. So there you go. Good yeah. to know. Want to go take a quick little trip? You can go uh, head up there. and You can see such things such as uh, the House of Wills, which is a haunted hotspot in the city. Uh, the history dating back to early 1900s. Um, in fact, uh, the House of Wills was purchased in 2010 by Eric Freeman, a prominent local Satanist. Oh. Oh. In, uh, in in lovely Cleveland. And according oh, to uh, the post in the New Church of Satan website, <laughs> it's a real thing. All right. Freeman intends to fix up the House of Wills and eventually use it as the New Church of Satan. Oh, wow. Well, so bless, there you go. Bless his mm-hmm. heart. There you go. Good for his historical purposes. Or maybe he's just a goat lover. Maybe. He's just want to play store the goats. <laughs> Um, so yeah farms so next time you find yourself in Cleveland go by in Lakewood, Ohio and visit the Caps Museum and Shop cool check that out what do we need and I'm sure they probably have a website or something where you can check them out and get all kinds of info heck yeah awesome absolutely Uh, while you're up in that area too I I found the place that I want to I found the place I want to live okay ooh Honey, we're moving to Pennsylvania. <laughs> Sorry to swear. <laughs> Surprise! Uh, but apparently, the uh, the Forge Mansion, Forge Mansion, is up for sale. Thrill seekers with a love for old homes can now live in the residence of a historical master craftsman, and apparently, meet a few ghosts as well. The charming Forge Manor in Wolmsdorf, Pennsylvania, is available now for the low cost of eight hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. <sighs> It has seven bedrooms, four bathrooms, seven working fireplaces, and the original colonial era woodwork. Ooh. Mm -hmm. It's a little imposing in that it is all museum quality. It's big, it's stylish, it's formal. Some folks find it a little bit daunting. And apparently, amongst all the colonial era woodwork and the multitude of rooms, the house was started, uh, started its life in 1749 as... Tulpe Hocken Eisenhammer. Wait, um, can you say that again? I went to high school with him. Oh. He's a good guy. It was a Tulpe Hocken Eisenhammer, which is a Pennsylvania German for an iron forge. Oh. So part of the house was actually an iron forge back in 1749. Very long word for iron forge. That's right. Uh, it was a uh, self-styled industrialist Baron William Henry Stiegel who moved into the home in 1763, renamed it Charming Forge. Stiegel's nephew added a larger section of the home between 1780 and 1784 after Stiegel went bankrupt and was forced to sell the home at the auction. The home was extensively restored in 1994, and modern amenities designed to blend it in with the historic home were added. The owner, quote, did a masterful job of doing the restoration and retrofit. It sits on a quaint little 48.5-acre lot, (laughs) which also includes a care... It's a a hell to mow, though. Yeah, it's oh, hell to mow. Where are you going to uh, park your bicycle? There's not enough room for to even park your bicycle. Well, there's also a carriage barn oh, that can go. actually fit four cars. Okay. There's a former summer kitchen on the site, a bake oven, and additional stone dwelling as well. It sounds fun. 
It's an hour outside of Harrisburg and just two hours from Philadelphia. Been to Harrisburg several times. As a bonus for buyers, this place is also the home to quite a few ghost stories. Mm. Tales include a woman crying in the hallways, awaiting her lover who fell from his horse approaching the house. Mm. Sightings of her deceased paramour in the yard with his horse. Mm. Sounds of the German prisoners of war during the American Revolution, which were kept there on the property. Stiegel himself is believed to have died in the house under his nephew's care, and some claim to have heard him stomping around in his riding boots. Nice. That is badass. So I say we need to go take a loan. Well, we all just put our money together, and we just go up there and we buy that. That'll be like a retreat, a summer retreat. Yeah, the ETSG retreat. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that. I like it totally. Forty-eight point five acres. Let's see. Let's Lots of that places up. to hide mm-hmm. the bodies. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you screwed it up. <laughs> now they're no, going to know how to look. Where to look for them. Yeah. Oh. Siri so, said it. Siri told me. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got Siri. Okay. Cortana? No. I, bullshit, right here. She don't work. <laughs> she, don't say her name. She'll pop up. <laughs> you just said it. And she didn't pop up. So she ain't working. <laughs> She's on the lunch break. <laughs> so there you go. You can buy that uh, lovely haunted mansion for only $125,000. I mean, that would be so awesome, though. When you're oh thinking about it, though, gosh. really, a four, a 48, you know, almost 49 acres, a colonial era house, plus all the other buildings on there. 825 is really not that bad. No, no. it's not. Not at all. I mean, because I have a buddy at work that's looking at a house right now. Uh, he's going to pay 370000 for it. And it's like a little four bedroom house. Yeah. Like, Almost 3,000 square feet. Is it feet. in the middle of Knoxville? Because, yeah, Okay, it is. then yes. there you go. That's what it is. But, I mean, you could get that and have all that land. He's going to be on a lot. Yeah. You know, he's going to be lot. on a lot. Yeah. Not a lot, a lot. No. Like a, lot. a lot. A lot. Yeah. Wow. So there mm. you go. If you're, looking, if you're looking for 50 acres of land. Give me land. Lots of land. And ghosts. Land Come on, ghosts. it's got a guy walking around, a, go, a ghost of a guy and his horse walking around in the yard. I'm game. I just need to see if I can get approval at the bank. <laughs> <laughs> we, can we sell Xander? I don't think they'd take him. You're probably right. We can sell him the copyright to hashtag Shy, Shy Casper. Casper. <laughs> <laughs> That's worth at least a hundred bucks right there. At it's least. gotta be. At least. It's gotta be. All right, Andrea, I think you have another story for I us. I do. And this, um, this one, I, I read over this one a little bit. Yeah. Um, so, this story is about a bat-like flying humanoid with an obvious face reported near Indiana's Prairie Creek Reservoir. Um, Lon Strickler of Phantoms and Monsters spoke to a witness via telephone on January 23rd regarding the sighting of a bat-like flying humanoid with an obvious face. I'm not exactly sure what they mean by an obvious face, unless they, they just mean, they mean that it's, it's, he it's, obviously has a face. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. just that phrase just kind of throws yeah. me off. An obvious face. It's <laughs> obviously has a face. It's Batman. I don't think it's Batman. I mean, it could be. I mean, it's black, bat-like flying humanoid. I have an obvious face. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these obvious faces around here. So the sighting took place. Obviously, took Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously <laughs> in Batman. <laughs> Hashtag shy Casper. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <sighs> so. <clears throat> The sightings took place on December 26, 2018, between 4 and 4.30 p.m. The witness and his wife were tra- traveling southbound on a country road about a mile south of the Prairie Creek Reservoir near Muncie, Indiana. Um, it was December 26, 2018, at dusk, and then a huge flying object caught the witness's attention. Hmm. The witness is a military veteran hunter, trapper, and farmer who lives in the immediate area. His knowledge of military flying craft, wildlife, and his keen keen sense of observance was apparent while talking to him. The winged being that he was observing was unlike anything he had ever seen before. The creature was flying just above the treetop level and was easily visible to the witness. 
His reaction was to slam on his brakes in wonderment, exclaiming to his wife, Do you see that? And his wife was shaken by the sudden stop and was un unable to react fast enough to see the winged being. The creature described by the witness was very similar to other reports of winged humanoids around Lake Michigan, uh -huh. including the stillness of its wings in flight. Kind of like mm -hmm. Batman. Mm -hmm. He stated that the being was humanoid in shape with an obvious face... The body had a length <laughs> of approximately six to seven feet with bat-like wings that were extremely wide. The being was dark colored and seemed to glide at a steady speed. He never noticed the flapping of wings while watching the creature. Um, according to the witness, the creature's wings had a leathery texture. He was unable to discern if the creature had any additional limbs beyond its wings, nor could he recognize fine details in his face. Also similar to other sightings uh, reports is the profound effect the experience had on the witness. The witness, the witness's wife stated that he has been truly affected by the incident and has constantly mentioned it to her in an attempt to explain what the winged being really was. He had refused to mention the incident outside of his family. When he read about the recent sightings in Gary, Indiana, he called his wife from his job and asked her to contact uh, Strickler right away. He later called Strickler when he got home, and the witness was very forthcoming and anxious to find out what the creature was. So, it was approximately 100, 140 miles southeast of Lake Michigan, and then less than five miles to its south is Summit Lake State Park. Um, and it has seen a recent spate of flying creature reports. I mean, that's odd that it just happens in that area, but... Well, you but, have, like, the, the Mothman. That's what I said. Know. That reminds me yeah. of the Mothman. It sounds yeah. almost just like the Mothman. Right. Um, it's the same distance from this sighting location as the Great Lakes. Um, this is the latest string of flying creature sightings around Lake Michigan that ostensibly began in the spring of 2017, but more historical accounts are being reported as more people become aware of the phenomenon. Most phenomenon? Phenomena. <laughs> Phenomena. <laughs> I'm so glad you guys got that. <laughs> Most of the sightings have taken place near. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the sightings have taken place near the lakefront in Chicago, with a few miles of Lake Michigan. Although there are reports coming from the suburbs surrounding Chicago and even farther afield in every state bordering the Great Lake, the sightings generally take place in the evening or at night often in or near a park and around water. Witnesses consistently describe a large bat or bird-like creature, although in a small number of cases, the creature was described as an insect-like, sometimes with glowing or reflective red, yellow, or orange eyes, and humanoid features such as arms and legs are often reported. Many of the sightings are also of something seen only briefly or are described only as a flying creature with few details, which leaves open the possibility that a large bird or bird-like being could be could explain some of the encounters. Dude, that's totally the same thing as Mothman. Yeah, almost exactly. And what's weird, it's, I was looking this up, Mothman was around the same time of year, too. Mothman mm -hmm. was November, December. Really? Hmm. Well, 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 we had to. And they said most of most of the uh, most of the uh, occurrences of Mothman reports were, well, Mothman were either late dusk or into the evening or late at night. Mm -hmm. and it was usually a man-sized object with arms and legs and bright red glowing eyes. Hmm. And when he was seen flying, it was flying silently through the air, oh. gliding. So now That's Indiana can claim. Mothman sightings. Mm -hmm. But here's the weird thing. Mothman last seen November 12th, 1966 to December 15th, 1967. He's back. Wow. Hmm. Very, very interesting. You know, what kind of struck me is that, okay, so this initial witness... Mm -hmm. He caught the, this flying object, and it was brief. Mm -hmm. Like, so brief that, you know, he stopped the car, 
told his wife, did you see that? And she, by the time she looked, it was gone. But he could tell that it had a, that his wings had a leathery texture. Oh, I mean, I don't. It just seems like that. That's a that that kind of texture would need to be close enough. Well, I mean, you got when when something like that happens quick. There's certain things that you will notice. Okay, you know? but I'm saying okay. It's dark, or it's getting dark. Well, he may have seen like a dark wing that was like shimmery or shiny, yeah. and it would look like leathery in the dark. Right. Okay. Yeah. But I don't think it, the wings were even moving. Okay, but it could be uh, he's, he's driving, just, yeah. right? Right. Car lights. Yeah. Hitting them, reflecting. Yeah. yeah I. Mean, I wonder. You know, I I I hate to discount anything like that. Oh no. Because you know there have. You know that I know there's several sightings. Yeah, I totally get that. I'm just, it, I guess, it just seems that the immediate time that, mm-hmm. and I guess it just depends on, you know, what stands out to you the most. Right. Yeah. You know, I, he couldn't see an obvious face, or he knew that there was an obvious face. He just couldn't see any detail to it, but he could tell that there was. Leathery wings, well, but he couldn't tell if there was a nose. Well, there was obviously a face, though. Obviously. obviously. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the weird thing that stands out to me, though. So, if we if this is some type of Mothman thing, because Mothman appeared for a year, almost a year mm-hmm. to the day, from yep. November of '66 through December of '67, December 15th. And why does that date stick out? Because on December 15th, the last sighting of the Mothman, which was a if I remember correctly, early, early that morning, later on that day, the Silver Bridge collapsed. Yep. And that was the basis yep. for the whole book, Mothman yep. Prophecies in the movie, that the sightings of this Mothman, because as, as it went, there were a few sightings in 66, and then as then there were more sightings and more and they gathered more sightings than us, and up to the point where that night before, he was seen like three times, and then all of a sudden that bridge collapsed the next day. Yep. And they said it was, it was all basically kind of a... A prelude to the bridge collapse. He mm-hmm. was trying to warn, warn them. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I almost because you said this. There's a, been a lot of sightings around that area. Of the, this bird-like creature. Yeah, and around water sources. And I mean, I wonder it, something's leading to. You know what's? There. I mean, what's How? interesting is it, it is from this point. What has there been any significant occurrence? You know that yeah. that could have kind of like the bridge collapse. Now, yeah, there, that's the thing. Is it something? It's that's prophecy yeah. coming. Yeah. Th- something is going to happen soon. Yeah. If I lived up there, I'd stay off of any bridge in that area. Yeah. Yeah. Forget that. Oh yeah. yeah. I'll take the long way around. I just won't go up there. It's dangerous. It's so there's, ch- there's children in the corn there. There is corn up there. There's corn. <laughs> there's <laughs> kids. <laughs> There's big flying moth people around there, bat guys. I hear it's there's. Batman. I hear the crime rate is pretty high up there too. So. Well, it's because of all the obvious faces. Oh, huh. makes sense. <laughs> makes all. <laughs> you have such an obvious face. I'm going to use that as like a compliment. You have such an obvious face. Why, thank you. <laughs> I'm the Batman. <laughs> well, you know what they say. Always be yourself, unless you can be Batman. Then always be Batman. Always be Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag be Batman. <laughs> Hashtag shy cast. Shy cast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, it's getting late. It is. And we're getting goofy. Oh, okay. yeah. Let's run back to shy cast. <laughs> it sure does. I told you. Circle. <laughs> circle of life. <laughs> <laughs> awesome uh, and this is why I love paranormal news <laughs> absolutely <laughs> you never know what's gonna come out it's like a box of chocolates yeah mm-hmm. nice. it's all good <laughs> <laughs> could have peanut butter <laughs> oh. you never know what you're gonna get <laughs> oh oh yeah well you know this evening has been awesome. It has been. Um, hopefully next time we can have Jesse and Steve in here with us. And my Everybody. And Elsie. 
and Everybody. Justin. Uh, We're going to need a bigger be, room. Yeah. <laughs> Sharing mics yeah. and headphones. Yeah. We'll just move everything out to the living Here, room. Here, you listen now. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and more cowbell. Hi. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> some more cowbell. <laughs> it's a freaking Batman crying, flying around there. <laughs> Shy Casper. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> this has been great. This has been great. And I hope everyone has enjoyed this episode of Paratalk as much as we have. It's been awesome. It's been um, awesome. And for everyone out there, uh, if you would just please, when you listen to the podcast, if you'll go on and rate and leave us a comment, and let us know what you think about Bear Talk. Uh, if you have any topics you want us to discuss, be sure and let us know. And if you have a story you want to share, you can always share your stories with us through our phone lines at 865-264-0448. That's 865-264-0448. And Andrea, are you okay? No. What happened? Blue farted. Oh. Right up in my face. He's just a little doggy. Yeah, but his <laughs> farts smell like a big dog. <laughs> you just pooed in mama's face. Oh, Lord, I tasted that. <laughs> oh. Blech. And be sure and check out our website at... What is that, ketchup and onion? <laughs> I did feed him an onion. Oh. <laughs> Not good. At www.easttngostseekers.org. That's easttngostseekers.org. Please so, like and share. Please like and share. <laughs> he was trying to share. Oh, he shared enough. <laughs> I got enough of that. He shared it. Did you like it? <laughs> <laughs> um, no. No. Did not like that. Not like it at all. <laughs> All right, and we just hope everyone tunes in next time for another episode of Paratalk. Who knows what we'll be talking about then, hmm. but I have a feeling it'll start with para. Talk? Normal. Oh. <laughs> you were fishing. <laughs> you were sitting there just waiting. Para. Go on. Finish it Shy up. Shy Caspers. <laughs> pair of shy caspers two of them oh. both shy <laughs> one of them don't seem so shy <laughs> <laughs> yeah just take back the pick take back the pick <laughs> sorry <laughs> it's already hit the interwebs all I can think of now is the ghost of mama cast <laughs> playing with Dan Aykroyd's family jewels <laughs> Oh my gosh. Eating Snuggle. a bologna sandwich. <laughs> Snuggles. Snuggle me, Mama yeah. Cat. <laughs> Alright, until next time. I'm Steven. I'm Andrea. I'm Mike. And you've been listening to Paratalk. Wow. <laughs> So many people spend hundreds or even thousands of dollars on that perfect infrared camera, hoping to catch that epic paranormal shot or simply to document their nighttime escapades, only to pair it up with an IR illuminator that gives off a hot spot in the center of the frame and performs subpar for their camera's capabilities. We did the same thing. Let me save you some time and money spent on multiple IR lights with one name, Deadlight. Created from the minds of Josh Bender and Justin Brown, who are also paranormal investigators, the Deadlight is the elite light to add to your camera arsenal. We have tested the Deadlight and illuminated areas up to 300 feet away. Did I mention these lights are built like a tank? Super durable and sturdy construction. Josh builds each Deadlight to meet your needs and is in constant contact during the building process. So forget the other lights out there and go straight to the best. You can check out the complete line of Deadlights on Facebook at Deadlight LLC. Justin and Josh are constantly exploring new features to add to the Deadlights. ETGS will never use another light in the field simply because nothing else compares. 
Get your deadlight today and you too can light up the night. night. You've been listening to Paratalk with the East Tennessee Ghost Seekers. If you have a question or comment about the show you just heard, or you have an experience to share, or you need to contact us concerning an investigation, feel free to email us at etgsparatalk at gmail.com or call 865-264-0448. That's 865-264-0448. We invite you to find and like the East Tennessee Ghost Seekers on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and visit us online at easttnghostseekers.org. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time on Paratalk. Paratalk. <laughs>